Hello everybody, um, our second live on the second block of our ABC quilt. Tonight we are doing B is for ball, beer is for ball. So this is the first PDF that you can download from the files at Quilt South Africa Group. And this is the second PDF that you can download from the files. And then there's a third one with some instructions for you guys. You need this one to cut the individual pieces and you need this one to put the whole block together. And then tonight we're going to focus not so much on the applique as such, but more on using decorative stitches to put your um, applique together on your main block. So what we do is we're going to start off again with our, um, we are using the calico, so we're starting off with the calico block with a piece of interfacing underneath and Willem is going to, well, he's going to start doing this. While he's doing that, I'm going to start on the block. So what Willem is doing is tracing on the, again, we are using tonight the diamond mesh um, applique paper. And he's, try, he's, he's um, busy tracing on the wrong side of the paper, so on the diamond mesh side, so that we can get a mirror image of the paper pattern on our fabrics. This is the fabrics for the ball that we're going to use for tonight. So I'm going to move over to the iron. And I'm putting down my block. And the shiny side is the one with the glue from the violin. I'm putting that down on top of it and then turning the whole lot over so that my fabric is on top. And I'm going to iron this down using no steam. When I see there's steam coming out of this little job, job and I'm not sure how to put it off on this iron. Uh, anyway. Let's just get it far on my car together. It will work even with the steam, but it's best to not use steam to, to actually attach lighting to your base fabric. So here we go. So that is our violin stitch up uh, ironed on the back of the our block and now we can bring the block back to where Willem is busy here he's still tracing the capital letter B and of course we've got help there's Max and over there is Grit Grit back Grit she's a bit of a shy girl but this one is everywhere helping Good, so Willem has traced off all the pieces and now he's quickly going to cut them out. Sorry about last night, we just could not do it because of the fact that we had load shedding. So we had to forego our live from last night. But tonight we are here in full force doing what we need to do. The video will be available tonight, still right after, um, on YouTube. I'm going to post it directly there when, I'm, when we're finished here. And I'm also going to put up C block C, which is going to be next week's. And C is for cat. And then we did an Afrikaans one. The B was easy. It is a multilingual, multilingual block. But C will be for cat, and C is for chilies. So we'll have chilies on the one block in Afrikaans, and we'll have the cat, like those two over there, on the block for the English block. So there we go. When I'm taking out the little bits of the B in between. Oh, 
what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to prop this up somewhere so that you can watch him. And I'm going to collect the arm for the for the uh, uh, phone. And then I can also get stuck in. Okay, people are watching you. Don't move your hands too far left or right. We haven't get, got people on the live yet, but they must probably watch the only way. I think they were looking for us last night. Anyway. Talk to the people about what you're doing. Hukum Hakani. Attach the arm to the table. There's the two bees. The one can go on the pink, and the other color, the red color piece. There's the other color. Was it noch niemand auf die live bei uns? Nee, uns ist noch ein Bonsa eier. So what I'm going to do, I'm taking the first B. Where's the small one? Here it is. Ah, okay. And we're going to iron these onto the pieces of fabric so that we can start using it. So this one I'm going to, the cherry red from last week that we used as well, I'm going to save that for the small one. And then the pink. It's an old piece of print from... Dagama's cotton range of Swishri, which they stopped to produce. I'm just going to iron it flat. There we go. As well as the little red piece. Let's take off the fluff. There we are. And we position our B. And it's directly on and hold not moving the iron around and she stuck down and then the small bee here in the corner so there we go same situation and this is what happens when you make a mistake cut another small bee please <laughs> Now I need to get that off this hot iron. Yeah, I think you're a Yeah. So, there we are. That came off, but now the glue is still stuck there. So, we're going to have a bit of a fresh mold with this now. I find that normally this, there we go. That helps. It's clean. It was just to get rid of the glue. And this happens. This happens quite easy, as you can see now. So there's our B. We can give that back to Willem. Then he can cut that out. And then we're waiting for a new, because this one is now, all the glue has been taken off of this, so that's gone. And then... We start with the pieces of, I'm going to put the cherry red one side. We start with the pieces of the ball. And this is the first one, is on the green fabric. I try to save as much of the fabric as I can. So there we go. There's that first piece going down. There we are. We can give that to Willem. The second piece over here. That is going down. There we go. 
and then the small third piece on the piece of yellow shrishri. I'm just going to avoid the the self edge over here, but you can see exactly where it is. <laughs> so we can be directly inside of that. Push and hold. There's that done. Now we're doing the little pipi. The top of the ball where all the colors come together and where normally the nozzle is situated to blow up the ball. There we go. That's also done. All our pieces is done apart from the big ball piece and the small bee. Well, let me recut the bee. I'm just waiting for him to hand it to me. And we'll attach it to that and we will all be done. Sorry for the wait. If I didn't make a boo boo, it wasn't necessary for the wait. There we are. Okay, so we've got the bee back. I'm going to position it in the corner here, avoiding the self edge, and press it down. And there we go. All nicely, tightly tucked in, glued down to our fabric. So there we go. The big B piece, the big ball piece, is the last of what we're going to need to get this going. Um, it's too much similar to the to the base fabric. I think we need a bit more color. I know it it would have worked, but it's a bit too similar to the base fabric. This is the one thing. You want it to have a contrast. So if your base fabric is white like that or beige, just off-white like that, you want your colors to be as bright as possible to, to, to stand out from your background that you're going to use. He's found a piece of brown. And he's going to iron that on while he's at it. There we go. Hold and done. All done. So now we're going to cut out all the pieces out of the fabric. Let me just get around the table. Sorry for our not so neat room. And then we can see what we can do. You passed me a pen there, please. There you go. Thank you. I'm going to help to cut. I'm putting this into the holder. So it don't get too seasick. me one of the pieces over there and away we go so now it's the time to cut out all these little bits and pieces and once this is all done we can start the actual assembly of the block I think people are having the last of their weekend, so we have no people on our live as is yet. 
which is also not bad because then we get through through building the block much quicker um, than what we would normally do. But it is so nice to have interaction with a couple of people. So hopefully next Saturday we can get back to our normal schedule of having it on the Saturday instead of on the Sunday evening like tonight because of the load shedding. Okay, so now I sit with this and I need to cut out that in the center. What I find it works easy for me is to actually fold this in half and just cut into it like that. So when you open it, I'm just pushing it from the back so that you can see there's a hole in the and now, because the circle is going to the inside, I'm turning my scissors around so that I can cut against the paper with the roundness of the scissor working together with the roundness of the pattern. I hope I, I'm staying in view. That's it. Out comes that, and there's our B also done. There's our little and William has done these. Is done a sticky that I can whip snay off snay. Is it the last one? Yeah. Okay, then I think we travel with all of this and this to the iron. And then we'll go and do the rest there. Sorry for the seasickness. I'm taking it out of the holder. And here is my sissy. There is us now three. This I can jy and Willem. <laughs> Hello, my sis. Um, ons is vanavond min, want het moes gestrand gebeur het, en ons kon nie gestrand nie, want die loud shading. So, ek dink mens is vanavond besig, en het nie tyd om dit nou te doen, saam met ons nie. Maar ja, jy is hier. Ons is baie blij daarvoor. So we're getting all the bits and pieces. And here we go. Off to the iron. Willem will come with a... with a pin. So I'm just taking them all off. Now... As you can see, you can use a light box for this, but what we try and do is keep a, a quarter inch around our block on the outside of the square, like so. And then we position all our pieces on top of here and then start to iron them down. So the first one that we need to iron down is the big ball piece that goes down there. So we need to take the paper off of this one first. I'm bringing it back to Willem. So what he does, just like last week, you sandwich the edge of the pin in between the paper and the fabric. And you gently loosen the, the paper from the fabric. The glue with the iron now is stuck to the fabric, so it will remain on the fabric and the paper alone will start to peel off. There we go. Can you see the fabric has now got a shiny side with a diamond mesh pattern on it? That's the glue sitting there. It came off the paper. So now we take this back to the iron. We can see where it's located on our, on our pattern. We lay down our block like so, and we iron it down. Same story like we did the previous time. We just keep it in one position. We don't really move it backwards and forwards. Now to make life easier, I'm going to pull this down so that I can actually see 
where those three pieces are located because I cannot now see them through this piece of fabric. Even with my light box, I would not be able to see them. So I just check this has already been prepped. There is the glue side on it. So I see that needs to go there. So um, I'm bringing this down, making sure that it's edged on the edge over here, laying flat in the middle over there. And then I'm putting down the second one, which is that one. Same story. We'll try and put it in the right position over here. And we need to now check that it aligns with the outside of our circle over there. That's it. So, and now for the last one, okay, it's a gelicky. And let's see where he must and pass. Um, so, and let's bring him and let's set him near where he must be. And let's begin to run the sky flat high. Skyf jou, want dit is makkelijker met die camera, want ek het te veel goed te mount. Well, once all three of those pieces are situated where you need them to be, like so, then it's a question of just pressing the whole lot flat with the iron. Again, don't use steam if you don't have to. I just don't know where the steam off is on this thing. Now we position the little pippy on the on top to cover all three of the raw seams of these over there and we <coughs> press it down. Then we're going to situate the two letters and again we don't want it on the edge too close to the bottom or too close to the side. I think we can just do it different. Let's do that. Let's do it. Do and do, that's it. And we press the two letters into position, and there we go. Our whole block is prepped. Everything is sticking to what it needs to stick to, and we can move over to the machine. I'm giving this to Willem, and I'm moving myself over that side. Right. It's lekker om jou in die rondte te hees, sissie. Het voel amper. Het voel amper of jy hier is by ons. Het voel amper. Ok, Willem, wil jy ek moet goed vasthou? Hoekom weet ek nie? Ek wil nie licht te aansit. Oe. Oe, meer licht. I'm moving machines around. Nee, so pensel. Doe maar. En dit lyk of ek allemaal wil seesiek maak. Ok. So, daar is ons nou raag. There is our little block, ready to stitch. And what we are going to focus on tonight is the first thing also what we're going to do is we're going to take our, off the, okay, there we go, Willem is here. The very first thing, we are looking for stray threads like this again from what we did last week as well. So, I'm taking this and I'm just nipping those off. There's a couple on the ball as well over here. Just getting rid of those. It neatens up the whole thing. And here we went a little bit over. So I'm just going to take that point away to make the ball more round. There we are. Lift. Okay. And then there we go. So there's our ball, there's the bees. And what tonight is all about is not to use, we're going to use not the blanket stitch and not our um, normal satin stitch. I want to show you with all the different, I want to show you that you can use whatever decorative stitches you have on your machine. We have a great selection here, but there's machines with over 400 of these type of things, which you normally don't use a lot when sewing. So I want to show you how this can be incorporated, all these decorative stitches, into your sewing of appliques to make them 
vibrant and more alive because of all the different textures that you get. <coughs> so the very first thing we're going to do, as like we did the very last time, we're going to start from the thing at the very furthest back, which is our main ball that we attached first. So we're going to do that edge, that part there, and that part there. This will be covered when we do this section all together. And then all of these inside sections will be covered when we go around the in center of there. So let's start on the outside here. And you pick a stitch. Mm -hmm. um, in my case, I'm just going to go for the, it looks to me like little chicken feet. Same story now again. Um, you need to have a little off-cut <coughs> thing to just see what your stitch length and width is and to decide if you're happy with that. Um, I don't know if you're going to see it on here. Because I'm specifically working with white thread so that it shows up on the... on the. Let's just see what comes out on the other end. That to me is perfect like it is there. So we're not going to worry further. We're going to go straight to our ball and we're doing the little chicken feet. Um, of course, you will want to do this with, a, if it's brown, you would want to use a brown thread so that it can sort of disappear. But there's no rule that says you cannot have it. If it's brown, you can have it in a bright yellow. To let it stand out because of it being such a decorative stitch. So what we want to do when, we want to, when we're using decorative stitches to do our appliques, we need to find the center of our needle. And where the center of our needle is, that's where we want the edge of the applique fabric to lie, right underneath the center of our needle. Can you see, I need to move mine over slightly that way. Can you see that I'm half and half? Half in on the left side with my applique and half off of the right side with, with just the background fabric. And then we can start sewing. You can go as slow or as fast as you want. Again, use your needle down and so that when you stop, your needle is automatically in the down position. Because this is a wide curve, I don't actually have to negotiate around a sharp bend. So I can just gently coax my fabric around the corner to make it go where I want it to go. And that's where I'm going to stop it. So I'm not cutting anything. I'm picking up. I'm taking the needle in the up position. I'm moving my fabric to the next set, which is over here. I'll cut off these threads at the end. And we're doing the second bit. Again, half applique in, half background in, in the middle of your stitching line. And off you go. And so. Again, a wide curve, so fairly easy to negotiate around not having to pivot. Getting to the end. There we go. One more. Done. Needle up. And we're going to move to the very last one over here. And we're doing needle down. Again, applique half, background half. There we are. And we can sew. Doing the last bit. And because tonight is all about decorative stitches, there we are, that's the last one of this. Needle up. Now I'll take my block out. I'll cut off the ends here and at the back. And then I'll go into the back and cut the all the all the loose bits and pieces to neaten up our applique on the back side and on the front side there's the one get rid of that and the other one is over here get rid of that is it not a new one? Okay. The other man said long go and slow. And here is a thrond at the end that Willem just showed me. And now we're going to do the three sections of the ball that's in color. So you can now use 
for each one a different decorative stitch you can do all three of those in one decorative stitch um, which I think is what we are going to do I must just pick one quickly and see what we are up to um, let's try stitch number 15 so there we go I just want to see the stitch length and the stitch width because there's a couple of shortened seams like there for instance so we would just, we, especially the width of the stitch we would like to see where that goes all right let's have a look at this it is going to be fine like it is so we don't have to do anything else and we're going to do all three of these sections so what we want to do now is we're going to start I'm going to use my scissor we're going to start with it is overlapped by this piece here we're going to start here come down pivot because it's a sharp point go up to there pivot again and go back to there we are not doing this because this will be stitched down when we stitch that one down in the round we'll start there go to there over there and here and from there to there over here and there and we're done let's do this we'll take the big one first again exactly the same principle applies half of the applique fabric is sticking out and now this is our background fabric half of that on this side and this is a straight line in front of you underneath the middle of your needle and off we go and there we are on the edge so now we pivot to get this side going and we keep going so that it goes onto the background first and then onto the ball again and you just manipulate your fabric to go around the curve until you get to the next point which is over here now and we're going to pivot half of the applique half of the background now here is where I normally then just neaten up this end and we go into the last, up to the last point. And that's it. We are already in the right place to just pivot it and to come down this side. So we're not going to move it any, so that we don't have to cut anything off, which also strengthens our seams. And we're going to work towards the point over there, and then we're going to pivot back, because we need to come up the outside edge over here. And we're on the, on the corner there, pivot back into the inside, and off we go. Iemand stier haar kies. Weet nie, weet nie. Dis net pukkie, want pukkie is die enigste een wat hier is. So sy stier vir ons haar kies. Dankie, my liefie. Liefie jou ook. Ok. So we now just move it to Annelie. the... Hallo, Annelie. Ten einde laaste. <laughs> Maar ek denk pikkie die haarkies gestief voor aan die gedrooi net. Hmm. Maar nou het ons daarom nou al twee so. Man en die sê beautiful. Dankie hoor. Daar is ons nou op die hoek. And we're going to do the outside curve. To make sure everything is fast. And secure. We're going to go to the corner over here. To there and we're turning up the last edge and go back again just manipulating your fabric and there we are we're at the edge at the top I'm going to leave the needle in the down position and I'm just going to choose the next stitch what I want you to consider is the fact that this is a tight 
curved stitch that we are going to work around here. So we don't want to, to, to pick something as elaborate like the leaves that we've just worked. We want a small stitch that sort of like keeps everything tightened together. And what I think will work fairly well is stitch number seven. Uh, no, let's not do that. Let's try stitch number, yeah, let's do 17 and see where it takes us. It's going to fill up most of the space. But again, we've got half our applique now in and half of the background block and off we go. It's like a little cross stitch pattern. And of course, this is now a much tighter circle to maneuver around. So you have to be on the go the whole time to make sure that it is doing what we need it to do. I now, now need to pivot at the end here to get that last little bit. And again, a pivot over here to just let it join up with what it started off with over here. There you can see where it started. And we now need to just do that little bit and we're done. Then it's the two Bs and it's all done. There we are. So now we can lift this. It gave it sort of like a little bit of a lace. I'll show you guys now once I've cut off all the stray bits at the back. There we go. It gave it sort of like a, almost like a lace edging around the ball there. So now we have to do the two Bs over here. We've got some time. So we're going to go down, choose something that can work for these all these long straight lines. I'm just going to go, if we have long straight lines, we want it to be slightly curvy. So I'm going to do with a very simple, um, sort of like a serpentine stitch around the small B. We'll do a more elaborate stitch on the big one. It's just on and off and on and off. And I'm slightly manipulating my fabric to do what I need it to do. To get around these tight corners. And it's off and on. And then it hits that corner and we need to turn it out. Off and on. Once it's on, we're going to start manipulating and off and turn and on and turn now what i can tell you in hindsight there we go that's just to secure it a little bit more in hindsight when i do this again Hello, my liebe Nachi. I hope it goes good with you. So everybody knows everybody in this live tonight. It's my best friend, <coughs> my niece, and my sister. In hindsight, this is going to be okay because because of what it is. But if you're going to wash this a lot, I would use a more more intricate stitch like I've done on the ball to keep this more secure. But if it's not going to be washed 100, if you're doing this for a wall chart, for instance, that is going to be perfectly okay to secure all that. So let's take the B and do something a little bit more secure on that. And let's do stitch number 85. And we'll start at the bottom here and we'll just go. Half on, half off, like usual. It's like an arrowhead. Now we want it to go back. There we go. We can pivot. And we can pivot to have a straight line. And there we go. We continue with this. Pivot slightly. Pivot a bit more to get around the corner. 
you can see I'd sort of like pivot every time I'm in the middle of the design where the pointy bit of the arrow head is situated then I pick up my foot and I slightly swivel and play with it okay last arrow head in the middle one back and now we're going to pivot out again to get out of that tight corner there we go and now we're going to start pivoting around the last one I'm just going to cut off the end here so using decorative stitches like you can could see on the ball earlier can be much fun if you use contrasting thread to make it a bit more standing out more if I can say it that way and then what that will do is it will just create another dimension to your actual patchwork at the end so there we are the outside of the bee is done I'm going to pick this up and now even though I said I'm not going to use the the inside curve of these little bees over here is too much for this arrowhead pattern to follow so I'm now going to go back to trusty old little um, blanket stitch and I'm just going to make the stitch width less than what it should be I'm going down to two so that we can catch it I need it to look the other way number 30 there we are now it will work the right way around Okay, let's go back to that. There we are. Small little blanket stitch just to secure our B in place. We can actually make it a little bit wider. And every time that the B is on the side where it's going to go straight, that is where you want to pivot, like there. Pivot, make the make the little stem and then pivot once you're back in the straight line of things. I'm gonna cut this off so that it's not in our way. There we are. And just over here. And we can finish this one off at the end here and do the bottom of the same one so it's needle up. Turn it over so that we can run do it in the same direction like we, we did before. I just want to start over here because otherwise this will get tangled there. And I don't want that. What I also do is I check where this is going to land. Can you see it's too far into my fabric? So I lift my presser foot and remove my fabric. And there it is right on the edge. And we can get going. And we pull it on the outside and on the outside and on the inside we work it on the outside we pivot we get to the end here back on the inside leg, leg and then we go up the last stretch and we're all done so now we can cut away our excess from here and we can cut away our jump stitch that we created over there and there we are b is for ball b is for ball next week we're going to do c is for cat c is for chili in a quipulate of wonderlijke naweek and we was now amal hier so net krista in pukkie in hanneli yeah jylle moet baie lekker slaap en lief vir jylle Ons sien vir julle gauw, jy sê goenight vir die mens. Goenight, lekker slaap. <laughs> jy moet daar gaan wooi. Tata. <laughs> julle moet lekker slaap, dankie julle gekyk het.